So let's get started. Let's learn about AWS, AWS Lambda. Let's learn about the integrations and let's learn about what we can do with AWS Lambda. So what is AWS? AWS is what's called a cloud provider. Basically, they provide you with servers and services and you can use them on demand, so whenever you want. And you can really scale easily. If you want a new server, it takes you two minutes. If you want 1,000 server, it also will take you two minutes. If you want a bigger server, a smaller server, that's okay. And if you want to shut down your server or, you know, turn it on, it's okay. You can do it whenever you want. That's why it's cloud provider. It's on-demand servers for you. But you're hearing me saying a lot of servers, but this is serverless, right? So let's let's just get there in, in the real time. So in the meantime, AWS, over time, they've revolutioned the IT. Before companies used to own servers, now they basically rent servers from AWS. The idea is that now if a company wants to get rid of a server, they just stop paying for it, and that's it. AWS, they power some of the biggest website in the world. For example, Netflix. All the videos, everything, the websites, all the analytics on Netflix is on AWS. So that's pretty awesome, that's huge. And in November 2014, so quite recently in the IT world, they've launched AWS Lambda. And AWS Lambda is what this course is about. So what is AWS Lambda? So here we go. Remember when I said servers, servers, servers? So we had servers, and that service for AWS is called EC2. And you basically go ahead and you rent servers in the cloud. They're virtual. And basically you say, I want some RAM, maybe two gigabytes of RAM, and this type of CPU, and they give it to you. And the instance is continuously running. You can stop it or start it whenever you want, but once it's started, it's just running, okay? And you get billed by the hour. So it's you can't just like start it and stop it. You still get billed for one hour. And when you want to scale, so say you start by one server, your application is going great, and then you've seen that you have more demand, more traffic, and that you need to scale. Well, you need to, buy to get a second server, right? And so when you scale, you need to add or remove servers by yourself. You can automate that, but still. So that's really good already. Um, many people are using this. This is an awesome architecture. But AWS said, why don't we just push it one step further? Why don't we make it even more like revolutionary? So that's when they introduced AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is, instead of servers, you have virtual functions. So that means you don't have any servers to manage. You just manage your functions, which is what your application does. And instead of being limited by RAM and CPU, you're mostly limited by time, meaning your functions need to have very short executions. Think of like an API, okay? Not a job that lasts one hour. You run them on demand, meaning if no one is using your AWS Lambda function, you don't get paid, you don't get charged for it. And if someone is using it, you don't get billed by the hour, you get billed by the 100 milliseconds. So that's a whole different scale, isn't it? And then finally, you can have one Lambda function instance, but if tomorrow you get a huge demand and you know somehow you get a big client and you have huge demand, the scaling is automated. You will get 1,000 Lambda function instances running for you without you doing anything. So you pay for what you use and they give you as much as you need to. So that's really awesome, right? And that's why it's called serverless. You don't need to manage your infrastructure anymore. AWS manages your infrastructure. What you do manage is your functions, which is what your application does. So from a developer standpoint, that's awesome. So let's talk about the benefits. There's really easy pricing. You pay for two things. You pay for requests and you pay for compute time. So a request is what? It's when someone invokes your Lambda function. And basically you have a free tier of 1 million AWS Lambda requests and 400,000 gigabyte seconds of compute time. It's also integrated with the whole AWS stack, and we'll see about this in the meantime, in the next slide. It's integrated with so many programming languages, and we have this also in the next slide. And then it's very easy to monitor it through AWS CloudWatch. So no need for you to look at server logs, the logs are directly in CloudWatch. It's easy to get more resources per function. You can just scale from 102 megabytes of RAM to 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, which is huge. And then if you increase your RAM, you also improve the performance of your CPU and your network bandwidth. 
So it's all a win. You just scale one thing and everything else scales with it. So that's really good. So let's talk about which languages you can use with AWS Lambda. You can use Node.js, and we will use Node.js for this course, partly. You can use Python, and we will also use Python for this course. That's why I don't want to show you exactly why one language will be better than another, because I don't think there is. But I just want to show you that both are possible, okay? They're very easy language, JavaScript and Python, so I think any programmer will be uh, happy with those. But you can also have Python 3, Groovy Gradle, Java Gradle, Maven, you can have Scala SBT, and C Sharp. So there's, there's lots of different runtimes. Here we can talk about the AWS Lambda integrations, the main ones. So there is API Gateway. And API Gateway basically provides an API for your users directly into your Lambda functions. So with this, you can run a REST API, you know, and we'll have a real world example about it. You can also integrate with Kinesis, and Kinesis is real time streaming of data. So you can have Lambda functions that just process data as it arrives in streams in Kinesis. You can have DynamoDB. And DynamoDB is basically a managed database, NoSQL database from Amazon, which means you can store your data and your states in DynamoDB. So if you create items, you would store them here. If you want to read items, you would read them from there. Okay? He has also integration with AWS S3. AWS S3 is where people go and store their big objects, their big files, for example, images, and for a long time. So we'll have an integration with AWS S3 in which we create thumbnails. It can also integrate with the IoT offer of AWS for Internet of Things, CloudWatch events, for example, if you want to run things on a schedule or a cron job, CloudWatch logs, if you want to stream, like do some analysis on streaming logs, SNS, for notifications, if you want to notify your user of anything and then send them emails, you can do that. And then Cognito, if you need user integration. So as you can see, there's tons of integrations. I'll just make sure to walk you through the main ones and all the rest are pretty straightforward anyway. So here's an example of what an AWS function may look like and the architecture that comes with it. Okay, and this thumbnail creation will actually do go ahead and do it, okay, in its simplest form. But so here's what it looks like. You have an S3 bucket, and your user goes on your website, and it, he uploads an image on it. Here it is. He went to the beach, and he uploads a beach picture. That's awesome. What's happened is that you want to create a thumbnail. You know what a thumbnail is? It's basically a smaller version of that image that loads faster, that is not high as definition, but it's very easy when you have very needs for very, very small images. So he puts his images, big images of a beach in S3. And then what's going to happen is that your S3 bucket will send a trigger to your AWS Lambda function. And that function will create the thumbnail. Okay. As you can see, that function only gets triggered when there is a new image. If there is no new image, that function doesn't do anything. Therefore, you don't get billed for it. And then once that function is done, it will just push the thumbnail in S3. You see the beach picture, it's now smaller. So that's my thumbnail. So I'll push the thumbnail in S3. And maybe you could also push some metadata information into DynamoDB, such as the image name, the image size, the creation date, etc. any metadata you can think of, okay, the resolution and so on. So that's a typical AWS Lambda architecture in which we have from the left hand side, a trigger, it's called an event in AWS. So we have an event trigger, which could be S3. But remember, in the last slide, we saw that there were so many type of integrations, then your Lambda function does something, which is usually pretty short, okay. And then it will probably push the result back to something, would it be the user or an S3 bucket or a DynamoDB table, or whatever. Okay, it's up to you. So you're basically free to create anything in AWS Lambda, which is awesome. So I hope I wor it worked, but are you ready? Are you excited? Because because I really am. So if you're ready, well, let's get started. That was a short intro for this course. And in the next section, we'll get really hands on. See ya.